Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be continuing our lectures and we're going to be talking about tires today. So uh, those little rubber things that keeps the uh, keeps the car rolling around and goes flat once in a while or has an issue and stuff like that. So we're going to start talking about some of the basics, uh, some of the measurements and some of the things you need to look out for on a tire when it comes to, you know, you know, making sure your tires are in good shape so you don't have any accidents, uh, hopefully. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start the share on this. And we're gonna be, like I said, talking about tires and then we'll start, you know, going a little bit farther on this subject as we go along. All right, so uh, to, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started. And it's taking a little bit of time today, but anyways, uh, you know, tires and wheels. So we can kind of use them as uh, a companion. You know, you can't have just the rubber pieces on. You have to have the uh, supporting part of it, like the rim itself. So you can get some really nice rims out there. You can just use the basic rims. Uh, just a, a word of uh, caution on getting uh, some really exotic rims and stuff like that. Sometimes the uh, tire profile and also the rim can actually uh, offset your speedometer, which uh, as we go along, we'll start learning about emissions. It can actually set those off so you can uh, may not be able to pass the smog check, but that'll be coming later on. But let's start about the basics. So. Uh, one of the things that uh, we want to make sure there's always enough tread tread depth in the tire. So that is the uh, tread, which I'll show you a picture in a little bit here of how much uh, rubber is actually left on the tire. Uh, these are that little grooves in the tire. And then there's some really aggressive uh, patterns on some of your four wheel drive vehicles. And there's some really nice highway quiet type patterns. You've not probably noticed that a, a big truck going by you, uh, possibly a four by four, and it's got a lot of road noise as it goes down the street. Well, those are aggressive uh, tire patterns. Or, you know, if you have a car that's doing the same, there may be something wrong with some kind of alignment or something on the car too. All right. so. Um, so this little measuring device, it's pretty cheap. You can, it's a small little tool. Uh, if you're doing any kind of service work, you really want to have something similar to this. The old, uh, it, there used to be an old thing. If uh, you take a penny and it still covers Lincoln's head, then it's still, uh, you're, you, could, you have good tire to go. I really don't go by that. I, I go by uh, other methods. And one of them is this. I look at the tire depth and this is actually, 330, I'm sorry, 630 seconds, okay? And that's how much depth is left. That's pretty good depth. When you get down to four, and depending on if it's a front or rear tire, or if you're talking about, you know, transit vehicles or just cars on the road, uh, when you get down to the four, that's pretty much when I say, okay, it's time to change the tires out. Uh, yeah, some manufacturer, well, some fleets will actually allow you two 30 seconds on the rear, but they do enforce the, uh, the actual, uh, like I said, the actual uh, four 30 seconds on the fronts. This is uh, kind of like uh, one of the things, this is actually showing you that it goes down. These are called wear bars. These wear bars are you know, actually part of the tire and it shows you at two 30 seconds uh, what's left on the tire. Uh, so you, you know, if it scrubs across, you know, flat on this part, you know for sure that your tires need to be replaced. You really don't want to go too much farther than that because there's not enough traction. And also, uh, you know, if you get a nice wet day, you may, you may be spinning around doing silly stuff and like that. So, all right, so here is the tire. This is how it's actually put together. Uh, they're, they're, and these grooves really kind of channel uh, water away, it gives you good traction. And depending on how those grooves are cut and also the way the diagonal uh, parts of them are cut, really gives you good, good um, actual, um, you know, tread um, grab to the road. We don't want too much grab to the road because that can actually um, lower our gas mileage on the car, which actually increases the fuel. Um, 
the actual emissions on the car too. So they're a really balanced. And especially when you get into your hybrid vehicles are really looking at how much you know, of a drag do we have with the tire um, to make it actually get better economy and stuff like that. So then there's actually the actual, uh, you know, the uh, uh, spike spikes and in it too that's actually where you can see those little cuts and stuff like that and then the tread and the grooves and then the rib of it right there and this is actually showing why i really was talking about just a minute ago and you know how the water can actually be channeled through and keep it from hydroplaning and if you have no tread left it's just a you know, it's almost like going to the uh, races and you'll see a slick while they, don't, they really want to get, you know, they just want to go to point A to point B and, and they're not really worried about the grip. And then unless you're talking about you know, going into uh, like Indy cars and then they really want to do that or you go with NASCAR, they want, they go around in circles all the time. Anyways, uh, but us going down the street, we want to make sure we have good traction and we channel that water away. And there's some really good aggressive patterns of uh, tread patterns that actually help with that too. Uh, tire makeup and you know, construction of it, you know, there's uh, definitely uh, more than just stamping out rubber. Uh, there are uh, parts of a tire and they, uh, depending on what kind of manufacturer you are, what kind of, uh, what the manufacturer has done, is how many plies you'll have in it, uh, belts going across to support it. Uh, if we just put a chunk of rubber on there and try to inflate it, it wouldn't have all the support a tire would. And we ask the tire to do a lot of things. We have the tire go through uh, different, you know, you know, heat, and we also were corning with the tire, and that would, if we had just, you know, chunk of rubber, it would slide over. Uh, possibly come off the rim. So there's a lot of engineering done as far as building up a tire. So this is a good example right here. When you get into your uh, suspension steering classes, they really go deeper into this. Uh, here is the inside of the tire. This is where everything is brought together. And I'm, if you were to take the tire off the rim and look inside, you would actually see what they call the major splice, where they splice the two pieces together. Excuse me. <laughs> oh man, one of those days. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Anyways, uh, continuing on. Uh, so here's this major splice of you know one of the way they put it together and build it. And this is kind of showing how they actually you know build the tire. You know the, the different stages as they go along and how they bring it all together. So the, you know they start off you know you know you know putting the plies in it in the sidewall components and they build the drum expands the actually. You know, Preparation, uh, preparation of the receiving of the belts. So it's it's a it's a pretty good process. And I, I was lucky enough to actually see tires made one time. I had a tour of a um, an actual uh, you know, you know, a Goodyear place, and it was kind of fun to watch all this going on. You know, it, we they showed us the different stages of it, and then they go into the actual you know forming and the molding of it and the tire machine. And here is the net outcome of it all. And this is what's important uh, when you start deciding to get tires for your car. There are sizes. Now, not all one tire fits all. You have different sizes for different uh, needs. And uh, this is a good way of you know looking at your tire and seeing what kind of tires you can have you have on your car and what uh, then you look up the owner's manual or you can look at the door placard uh, right by the uh, driver's door uh, usually it's right at the back of the door it's either on the door itself or it's at the uh, right by the door striker where it connects to but it'll tell you what tires uh, are for what sizes are for your car and this is what we're talking about so we have you know here the width in millimeters on this particular one, to, and there used to be some old uh, tire size um, makeups back in the day, but we're pretty much uh, in the metric part right now. So 205 is that actual section width in millimeters, and then we have the aspect ratio. So how how you know wide versus how tall the tire is actually, and by what brim size. So that actual metal piece or that uh, you know 
different you know, material that might be into the rim that supports the tire. And then you have, you know, um, the rim and then you go into the load index of the uh, how much it will actually take. And then you have the speed rating on this particular one. So normally what you'll see, okay, and, and unless you really start digging into it, you'll see the 205-75R15. And that gives you kind of a good start part. But you need to start thinking about the other parts too. You know, what is, how much can that actually support on the vehicle? And uh, my speed rating, and it's not saying you have to go at a faster rate of speed. It's just saying what is uh, possible. Now, all bets are off if you ever have the tire repaired. Um, if it gets a nail in it, then these ratings kind of go out the window as far as the speed and also, you know, the load, because now that tire has actually been hurt, damaged, and it may not have the same ability to support like it would before. All right. Uh, and, and it kind of it shows you here out here. Here is a tubeless valve, which is that valve's stem. It has the uh, core inside of it that you actually fill the air up with. And here we have the tire, but then here's the bead of the tire. Now, for you uh, folks that are going to be doing service work on the tire, uh, you need to be very uh, aware of the bead. If you damage that bead, you pretty much, uh, you know, da damage a, a tire where it may not seal again. So you'll have a customer that has a lot of tire leakage. So it's a very, it's a, a great art on how to do it. I'll show, I actually uh, put up a tire machine video for you uh, later on in this actual module. So here is showing you the different uh, sizes. So here is, yeah, it's got the 20575 75 by 15, uh, then a little bit bigger, and there's even larger. So the rim actually sizes change. And you start getting into some of the, uh, the actual uh, uh, low profile tires. I, I didn't include this in it, and this is not in this PowerPoint. But there are different uh, makeups too. So you, you get into your 20s and uh, you know the larger rims, and then you have a very small profile. But remember that you know tire has to support the vehicle, and you may affect some of the cornering ability uh, because of the is not as much available for flex of the sidewall and stuff like that. And here is just showing you that kind of index I was talking about a little bit here about the speed rating of the tire and the load index of the tire. And here's that little placard I was talking about. This is really great information. It gives you an idea of what tires are supposed to be on the car. And also, you know, what, you know, you know, the spare is. And it also goes as far as telling you what the air pressure is. And even though it says on the side of the uh, tire, uh, 35 PSI. That doesn't mean that's what's supposed to be in the tire. Uh, it actually can be different between the front and the rear. And you want to be aware of that because if you put too much, it can actually wear the tire out faster. Or if you put too little, it can actually wear parts of the tire out faster. So you want to put what is uh, on the door placard or you um, want to put it to where the owner's manual says. And depending on the manufacturer you have, uh, the car you have, I should say, you may have options. You know, you may be able to go up to 245 60R17 uh, versus the, uh, just a 220, a 255. So there may be some kind of options. Uh, you may not be, uh, this depends on the actual manufacturer of the vehicle itself. So here's uh, showing an actual, um, the tire, you know, quality grading system, you know, where, you know, they actually print it on and saying, hey, this is, you know, the type of tire and it's good, to, you know, it's good. Uh, and these are the quality standards and, and they give you all kinds of like the tread wear, the traction, uh, temperature rating on it too. So they really do some great engineering on this. This next slide, I really want to point out and uh, buyer beware is what I say all the time. And I, um, I was teaching a uh, introductory uh, auto class, which we were going over tires at a class over in, uh, in Cerritos. And we were talking, we were talking about tires and they, one of the guys got up and said, yeah, I got this great deal. This guy, you know, he lost his shorts on when uh, I uh, bought the tires from him. 
And I said, really? Okay, fine. And then he uh, brought the car in and really pretty looking tires and stuff like that. But we went ahead and looked at the date code on it. And uh, sadly to say, those tires were 10 years old. And you can tell, you can actually look at the date stamp. And usually it's on the inside of the tire. It's not always on the outside, but usually on the inside. Uh, you look on the inside of the tire and you bring it around to this section here. And this is the DOT Department of Transportation date code. This tire was uh, built on this particular model, the 12th week of the 2015. So that tells you that tire right now is you know really over five years old already. Um, is it a good deal? Maybe. Uh, but be, buyer beware. That's like I always say, buyer beware. Uh, look to see if that uh, deal is, you know, really, you know, uh, it sounds like a good deal. It may not be a good deal. You want to have pretty fresh tires because you're going to have those tires on your car for quite a bit of time. And this is just showing how the, you know, some of the tires can actually have faults and the shape changes, which actually, you know, turns it, this one actually, uh, and cause it to go into, it, it actually causes the tire to pull. I mean, the car to pull goes to one side or to the other due to the, the, the misshape of the, the tire. It's, it's just one of those things that can happen. And usually you, if you get a, uh, if you're driving down the street and it's just pulling really hard and usually this happens almost abruptly, it could be an internal core to come apart and it actually causes the tire to actually do that. Uh, Here's just showing uh, one of the belts. Uh, this has actually bled through. It, this looks like it probably has a, an alignment problem on this particular vehicle, and it actually, you know, kind of scrubbed. Now, um, again, uh, when I did tire work, and I still do once in a while, I always have a pair of gloves in case this happens. Because you can imagine, you go to take a tire off and you grab inside, it can actually cut your hand. Because these are steel belted on a lot of them and there's steel coming through and you can imagine just by touching here you can actually cut yourself all right uh, and then you know kind of you know talking a little bit about the footprint of the tire and how it actually helps the direction of the uh, way it leads down the street and this is a good picture of what a tire looks like inside now we're going to get into tire monitoring systems in just a little bit here but right now just kind of show you where or one of the sensors are inside the vehicle itself. So there's different types of tires out there. There's some run flats. Now the run flats are made, of course, to, you know, you can run them on lower uh, tire pressure and get to where you need to go. But the problem, you know, one thing I want to remind you, and this is what's really good about tire monitoring systems, uh, is that it still does not give you the same stability with the uh, tire actually uh, low on air. Uh, does have more reinforcement. There's some actual uh, extra rubber inside run flats and it takes a little more skill to actually get the run flats on and off. Here's kind of a uh, what the pieces of the run flat look like. And you've got a special rim, of course, and then you have that actual plastic piece that goes in the center. And then you have the tire that goes on wrapped around it. So uh, tires always have performance criteria uh, specifications on them and you're gonna get all kinds of different numbers. The best thing to do is you know, break out that book and start looking at what uh, you know, type of tire. And of course, we can actually look by the size, but then you know we may have on this particular one, it actually has an M on it. Actually, on top of my head, I think it's some mud and snow. So this is gonna be for off-road type stuff like that too. So, um, and uh, on your rims, you know, we didn't really talk too much yet about rims, but this kind of gives you the idea. So here uh, is telling you, you know, the tire, uh, the wheel is usually uh, casted on there. So I see a 16 by, and then it gives me that seven inch wide. Okay, so that's seven right here. So my 16 by seven, and this J here is the, actually the belt uh, set area of this, you know, the steel itself. So. Uh, that gives you some more information on and, and it can actually be a, a concern on the matchup of the tire versus actually the, um, the actual rim itself too. So here's the actual makeup of the rim. Now this is a standard rim. Now this is not your uh, you know uh, offset rims which can be a little bit different too. Uh, 
this, you know, this is shows you where the bead sets into and at the flange coming up. So this is that rubber part of the tire that gets a lot of strength to it to help support the tire. And then uh, we have, you know, the way it drops in uh, and, you know, then we kind of cut it away at the cross section a little bit more. You can actually see it uh, a little bit more here. Uh, and then you know, we get some offsets. So you get some tires that are actually, you see that it's spaced instead of being direct, de you know, actually in a dead center. This one actually is saw offset into the backside and this one's offset to where it's more out to the front itself too. So we have positive and negative offsets. Uh, one of the things, you know, you, you, know, you can look at, you know, how much of an offset it has, you know, to just the uh, distance between the mounting area and stuff like that too, and it gives you some good ideas. Uh, bolt patterns, yes, uh, you can have different bolt patterns. Some of them can be four, um, uh, you know, kind of mounting um, uh, studs or uh, bolts to it like that. But this is a showing you kind of the spacing. You want to have them evenly spaced. And normally, this you don't have to worry about the two, unless you get some of the uh, uh, you know, adapters where they actually uh, change this up, and which can actually uh, change the makeup of the, the way the actual tire works in the, you know, when they actually do that. So uh, you don't want to hop along or anything like that is what I'm trying to get at. So, the measurement between should be all even, like here's a actual fives, you know, lug, as they call it, but left, the one before is a six lug. And then trying to give you some ideas on, you know, the pattern uh, where it actually is put in. Uh, I shouldn't say put it out, but, but it's actually the center of the rim. And, and there's a lot of uh, thought process in the manufacturing of rims. And uh, I did get to go see a rim manufacturer from uh, ground up and uh, it was amazing. How can I tell you how they actually build a rim from raw stock. And these were some performance rims that they use on Ferraris and stuff like that. But a lot of makeup going on to it, I'll tell you. And then the drilling the pattern to make sure they're the same distance and the bolt circle that way it's around. Uh, this is just showing it. This is an actual uh, a symbol of a Japanese wheel it's a light aluminum on uh, this particular one. Uh, this is showing you how the air up, you know, now this is a standard uh, air valve. You know, this is, you know, one's a snap in, so it snaps into the rim. This is a bolted one in, it's got, you can actually see the rubber washers going on here too. So in the cap, and I, and I can't stress enough for you to make sure the cap goes back on. The Schrader valve or the valve, the you know the service valve you know that's in the center is not really made for sealing. That's generally it'll help, but you do have a certain amount of air loss uh, each month. Uh, you know, I, and I, I say by month, and sometimes it's two uh, in, uh, inches of, you know, um, of actual pressure, uh, but sometimes it's actually a little bit more loss. It just depends on your tire, the rim, and how it's actually. Um, you know, actually is put in uh, how the tire is made up and like that. So uh, always check your tires. I would say let no, no more than once a month to make sure they're full. Uh, that does uh, affect your fuel economy and it does affect emissions by not uh, keeping the right amount of air in it. Uh, so these are uh, different styles are out there. There's actually some ones we'll talk a little bit more about when we get into our air monitoring uh, systems and stuff like that. Uh, just different types of uh, lug nuts, as they call them. Uh, and these um, uh, actually can have different tapers to them, uh, different types of stuff. And then this actually uh, is really because of the rim. So that, you know, I want to stress that you did, just don't take uh, lug nuts and clap them on there. There's different types of lug nuts for different ones. So here's showing the standard tapered type one. Then you've got some ones that actually are an acorn type style. And then there's, this one actually has a shank to it. So this one sets in different than the other ones. If you were to put one of these on this, uh, you would have possibly some slippage going around. So the, the rim would not stay straight and it would kind of shift around. And you may not even get the sh uh, shank one to fit in the tapered or a standard type taper. 
This is a lock off, a knock off uh, wheel uh, that actually spins on and that tightens from the center here. So it's not doesn't really have the lug nuts like you would see on the other ones. This actually spins on a lot of race cars use this quite a bit. They get them on and get them out. What can I tell you? And then you, this is where we're talking about the lug nuts, how they're now. One thing I do want to um, talk about too, and you know, one, you know, yeah, this one actually has both on it. Wow. Uh, one of the things I did want to point out too is, in, in, in kind of, this is a look look alike, is make sure you torque the lug nuts down. Don't just take an impact in there and knock them on down and say, oh, okay, they're good to go. That doesn't work, folks. Uh, you want to make sure they're torqued to specification, and it could change be, you know, by your axle rim type too. So if you've changed rims out, yeah, I would get with the manufacturer of the rim to make sure you're putting enough pressure or twisting force on the actual lug nuts. If you don't, you have a possibility of one, stripping the lug nuts out or the studs out, or you may even have a tire come off and you do not want that happening, especially to a, cup, a customer's car. So let's talk a little bit about tire inspection. Of course, you always want to look for what air pressure you, you should be in there uh, in the actual tire itself and, and make sure you have the right tires too. Don't forget about that part too. And you'll notice that right here, this is, has one of those speedy spares. Now the speedy spares are, uh, I should say a temporary spares. Let's put it that way. These guys are only for a temporary basis. They're not there for to be on your car forever and ever and ever. Usually they're a smaller profile and they do cause a bit of pulling depending on when you actually have to pay, uh, actually place them. So keep that in mind too. And it tells you right here, 30 PSI on the fronts and the rear. So that gives a good balance going on. And then 60 PSI on that actual spare. It needs to be kept up there because it needs to bring it up a bit. Now the tread patterning is gonna be totally different and you may get some squirrely feel with that actually on, but that, again, that's only made for temporary. Looking at the actual tread pattern, I myself would not run my hand across there. I'd be more of a visual inspection. Again, like I said before, with the putting your hand across it, you may end up having some issues with cutting your hand and you don't want to have that happen. Check to make sure it has the, uh, the actual caps for the actual service valves. You want to make sure and then check the air pressure. Make sure it's within the specification. Uh, you don't want too high. Uh, you know, I, I like to check my uh, tires when they're cool or cold. So I usually run over to the 76 station right next to me. Of course, you got to put a little money into the actual, you know, uh, the uh, meter uh, to get the air pump to go. But it's worth it. Uh, it definitely helps with uh, tire wear and also your fuel economy and stuff like that too. So check it, make sure it makes, you know, it's within specs, this one is. Uh, I would not, you know, get really critical if it's within two pounds, uh, I would not worry about it too much, but if it's really grossly low, so this one's like 28, eh, it might be still cold, uh, maybe throw a couple pounds in there and get it going. And also uh, check the depth, make sure you got enough uh, tread le uh, left to it, it might be time to start looking for a set of tires. And you flatten it all out. You know, I, I actually, what I do is I check the inside and the tire and I look at the outside of the tire too to make sure it's actually even across. If it's not even across one, I've either had an air pressure problem uh, where I you know neglected it or I could actually have an actual alignment problem too. So this is two things I look at when that happens. So looking here, it looks like it might be pretty good. This is one thing I do not go by, but some people still do, is if it covers Lincoln's head, I take a penny out, it might be a go, no go type thing, but it doesn't give me some critical measurements. One thing before I conclude this, I do wanna point out in the automotive repair industry, uh, we are uh, required by the Air Resources Board, California Air Resources Board. There was an actual document uh, put out by the Air Resources Board saying that anytime a car comes in for service, it, you must document the air pressure in and out. So when it, you, if you are in the industry, keep this in mind because uh, the Air Resources Board or their representative can come and monitor your work orders and if you are not logging them in and out, 
you can actually be cited per car uh, on at, uh, and it, I understand it's a pretty hefty penalty. So I don't want any of you, you all to actually uh, get you know fined for something like this or be in, in that kind of situation. So uh, tires, uh, in a nutshell, these little rubber devices, not just rubber devices, they are very well made and they are engineered uh, much more uh, engineered than they originally started off. You know, originally there was uh, a piece of wood as a rim and then they had a leather strap that went around and this you know, really has changed the engineering, the uh, manufacturer has made them uh, car safer. And if you, we take care of the uh, tires and make sure they have enough air in them and make sure there's enough tread left, uh, it will help with stability and keep that safety aspect up. All right, uh, we'll be talking uh, pretty soon about uh, tire monitoring uh, systems next. So look forward to that and I'll talk to you soon. Take care and we will see you on the next one. Take care now, bye.